Hi, this is Nicole from Brooklyn Letters, and I am here today with one of our learning specialists, um, Joanna, and she is going to introduce herself. Hi, Joanna. Hi, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Good. Awesome. And so tell us about yourself, Joanna. Um, so I am a tutor with Brooklyn Letters, and I'm a reading specialist. Um, I am actually a full-time uh, private reading specialist, so I don't work in a school anymore. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and I've been tutoring one-on-one -on -one for years, I think for at least five years um, mm -hmm. on my own. Great. So I work with a lot of kids with dyslexia, um, with other reading issues, but it's um, mostly first through fifth graders, I would say. How are you doing with the transition to remote services? Actually, it's been interesting because I was already kind of making a transition to some online tutoring before. so. Weirdly, I was, you know, kind of comfortable with um, some of these platforms like Zoom and use and doing my tutoring on Zoom. Okay. Um, because I wanted a little more flexibility with my schedule, so I was um, already kind of used to doing some sessions like that. That's but then great. all of a sudden, it was all of my sessions. Right. Um, so it's been, you know, it's it's been definitely an adjustment to have all of my sessions online and kind of create a schedule um, and get everyone on board with it right? Um, and sort of show people the value of online tutoring. Right. And it's been a transition. I mean, of course, we've experienced that with our clients, um, not only with those clients that have been doing one-on-one -on -one you know, in-person tutoring, but um, now, you know, we have an influx of, of new clients who, um, you know, have never done tutoring before and find themselves in a situation where it's necessary and unsure about the whole on online platform. And so um, I've been talking with a few of our specialists, just getting, um, answering kind of some hot topics and some questions that maybe parents would have um, or other professionals might have um, and using your expertise and the expertise of some of our staff. And so um, what I've kind of done is if I see an interesting article or um, you know on a forum, there is um, you know a discussion going on and, and I think I'd like for us to weigh in on, um, I just bring that up. And so in your case, I just, I had thought of you um, when I read an article by, it was, it was put out by Utopia, Ed Edutopia, E-D-U-Topia. Um, I saw it on their uh, Facebook posting and the author, his name is Andrew Miller. He posted this on April the 7th and the article was called Formative Assessment in Distance Learning. And it discusses how to determine whether students are kind of getting the top, you know, getting the information, getting this, you know, the, the instruction. Um, and they gave, you know, a laundry list of, of tools, of electronic tools that they can use. One of the things that you and I discussed is that that article is really more um, for teachers, um, kind of a teacher type situation. They gave several different tools that can be used that maybe aren't used as much by tutors, but I thought it raised an interesting topic. Um, one that I could ask you as a tutor, how are you dealing with this kind of formative assessment? Um, you know, how are you finding ways to make sure that your kids are demonstrating their understanding to you? So kind of share with me what you're doing there. Yeah, and after reading that article, it's definitely more targeted towards classroom teachers. And I think for those teachers, they have actually the bigger challenge than somebody like me who is working one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. um, because I think um, doing online tutoring is so similar to you know sitting at a table one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. that I use pretty much the same the same methods that I usually use. Okay. But for a classroom teacher with so many students. It's very, very difficult. Right. Um, but as far as assessments, um, you know, I, I do a spelling assessment and reading assessments when I first take students on. And when it's online, I, there's so many um, online resources for books. I use Reading A to Z a lot where I'm able to just pull the, the book up on screen. The kids can see the book. I can listen to them read. And then I can mark you know, which words they're getting wrong and be able to assess their reading level. So it's very easy for me to do. It's very similar to, you know, sitting at a desk and having a student read to you. Right. Other, yeah. So I would say as a tutor, it, you know, there hasn't been 
I think, as much of a difference as some of those classroom teachers that are dealing with so many kids at a time. And there's a range of experiences I know kids are having with online school. Mm -hmm. But for tutoring, I think it's pretty similar. It's um, as far as, you know, the way that I'm doing it. I'm not sure if other tutors are making big changes to their practice, but um, I'm still using the same assessment tools. I can print out anything I want in my home and then I can I can pull whatever I need up on the screen. Zoom is an amazing tool. You can share your screen so you can share any document that you have, um, which, is, which makes assessments much easier. Um, and also Zoom has an annotation tool so sometimes I'll be teaching students on where I would use a regular whiteboard in a in an in person session. Zoom has a a virtual whiteboard. You can oh, write right. on it just like a whiteboard. Um, and I have students. Um, a lot of the older students, especially, are able to use the annotation tools to kind of demonstrate their understanding. So that's mm -hmm. another way I will kind of assess them as I'm teaching them. Right. You know, I will say, oh, place, can you put some, um, you can use it, and kids love this also. They love mm -hmm. the annotation tool right. because I'll say, okay, instead of just drawing a circle around, you know, I give them a group of words and I'll say, draw a circle around all the suffixes or something. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they would be able to do that in person with a marker or something right. like that. But on, on Zoom, they can use the different annotation tools. They can pick a color. Right. Um, they can make a box around it. They can make a circle and they're very engaged with the annotation tool. So that's great. That's um, great. That's so a good way where they can visually show what they, what they, you know, what I've taught them. They can, they can show their understanding. Right. That's what in the article, I think they called it in the moment checks. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you're sitting, you know, side by side with a student and you're working with them on, you know, a particular concept, there are different, you know, cues that they give off and different things that you can in the moment know um, that they're getting the concept that they, you know, they've mastered that or that they're even having difficulties still. We need to work harder on that. So this is one of your tools that you are able to utilize for in the person checks to see mm -hmm. if they're doing things as you go along. There's the importance of the assessments, the more formal assessments mm -hmm. um, to that will document what they've learned kind of over time i think a bigger challenge especially for classroom teachers now doing remote learning would be making sure that their students are getting all of those little concepts along the way in the moment so that yeah, and i i think honestly a lot of those a lot of that is now falling on parents unfortunately right. um, i don't i don't know how parents and teachers are dealing with it honestly mm -hmm. because the kids are you know you've got a class of 30 kids they're not in front of you they're right. um all over like, all over the place yeah <laughs> and we also talked about before we um actually started interviewing and um, that kind of raises the question then of how do you keep students and families um you know moving forward in the tutoring process you know it I would imagine that sometimes the tutoring sessions need to be shorter and because it maybe is a little more difficult to keep kids engaged that you're not sitting face to face, you know, in the same room with them. But do you have some tips? I mean, we have, we have parents who, um, and, and new students that we're working with who've never done even one-on-one -on -one tutoring before. They're, you know, the online situation is their first experience. So they don't even know what to expect in a tutoring session. So what would you, what advice would you give to parents, um, about the environment that they can set up, what they can do to help you to help the students then, you know, stay engaged and move forward in the sessions. Yeah, the environment that parents set up is probably one of the most important things in, as far as online tutoring. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and it's, it comes down to little things adding up to um, a student's attention. Those little things are just like, what kind of seat are they sitting in? Are they on their bed? Mm -hmm. um, and, and obviously every, every um, apartment and home is different and some people don't have a lot of space, so you do the best you can. Um, you know, there's so many factors that go into having a good online session. Seating mm -hmm. is one of them. What's your um, technology? Are they on an iPad? Mm -hmm. um, are they on a desktop? How are they sitting? If there's a parent 
who's kind of nearby, things are always better because sometimes tech issues come up. Sometimes they can't hear me. I can't hear them once in a while that happens. Um, you know, so even just the way a child sits is can make all the difference in a session and whether a parent is, I know parents can't be there the whole time, but are, you know, do they know when the session is, you know, do they know pretty much what is going on and when? Right. And you said like knowing when it starts, knowing when it's coming to a conclusion, yeah. uh, having supplies available. Yeah. Making supplies sure are very awesome. important. I mean, obviously, you know, is your technology up to date? Um, I, I found, you know, some kids are on iPads and it's working out really great. Definitely mm. not a phone. Um, <laughs> why not? Tell us why a phone is difficult. It's just too small and you don't have that same seriousness about sitting um, and working on something. Right. You wouldn't be teaching a child in a classroom laying down on a phone. It's just right. your posture is really important to your mm -hmm. learning. And I do have some kids that are on their bed and on their iPads. Mm -hmm. And as long as they're engaged right. um, and they're not moving around too much, it can work. But um, that's, you know, some parent involvement is important with online tutoring. Right. Online tutoring. Um, yeah, and I think that that's important for parents to understand as well. And like you said, they don't have to be sitting side by side next to their student. And actually, probably in most cases, it's best that they not be overly involved um, in what's going on. But just being a presence so that the students understand that, you know, this is you know, a serious situ situation. This is what I'm supposed to be doing at this time and that it's not, you know, playtime or. Um, yeah. yeah. And going back to the tools that students need, mm -hmm. um, I, I do use, I have students write on a whiteboard or a mm -hmm. paper in their house and then right. I will have them show it on the screen. So having right. those tools ready um, and it's true. Some parents can't be there, um, you know, some parents are engaged the whole time. Other right. parents, you know, they're in and out. They have other kids and there's so right. much going on during right. this particular moment in time um, that you, you know, you have to be really understanding, but mm -hmm. also the set, the, the success of the tutoring and your investment in it is riding on, is this student engaged for this hour? Right. How do you think, um, or what's your opinion about the necessity for one-to-one -one um, tutoring, whether it's with a private tutor or even with the teacher and um, their classroom teacher, and um, the importance of the one-to-one -one versus the classroom online setting. What What is your opinion about that? Yeah, I mean, I think in a perfect world, every student would have one-on-one -on -one time, um, but mm -hmm. I know that's not possible even when we're not all tutoring, right. and even when it's not, you know, the middle of a pandemic. Right. But um, for some students that don't have learning issues and they're very independent, mm -hmm. um, there are some students who are in a, who are going to do fine. Mm -hmm. um, but there are a lot of students, especially those with learning needs, um, that need the one-on-one -on -one attention. Right. Um, and then there's also students that, you know, because of their online school situation right now. Um, maybe weren't falling behind before, but they're not getting the help they're needing now because they're right. not in that kind of environment. For right. those kids, those kids might need one-on-one -on -one attention also. Yeah, um, and we've had a, several parents, um, you know, current clients of ours um, who have been doing, you know, one-on-one -on -one tutoring and then when you know we went to this remote situation their response has been oh we just you know we just can't do this online tutoring because you know my son or daughter is having a really hard time um with the classroom you know zoom setting there's no way that they can do one-on-one -on -one. do you think that there would be a difference or do you think that having the one-on-one -on -one tutoring would even possibly help them with their group setting um, think about it's that. possible i mean um, you never know really until you try it. And there are a lot of kids that are struggling to be on a screen and they're struggling in that format where they're, um, well, there's actually two issues. There's the, there's the being on screens all the time. And then there's the feeling that a lot of students get, I think, you know, in their 
online virtual classrooms, which is they're kind of being left to fend for themselves. Right. Um, and I think that's a situation where those kids would really benefit from a one-on-one -on -one tutoring situation. Right. We need to be very um, individualized, especially now with students, to help them to move forward because it, this will end at some point and students will be back in school. And so, you know, have we maximized what we can help them with during this time without overstressing them? It's a tricky, it's very tricky. Yeah, and it's, you know, for some, for some kids, it's, it's been very difficult for them mm -hmm. to um, to kind of move forward in this situation. Right. Um, but I've, I've personally tried to keep my tutoring, um, as similar to the right. way it was before. Mm -hmm. Um, so the kids, are, you know, they're, they know what's coming. They know we do this part of the session, then we do that part of the mm -hmm. session. Um, and I found that's, that's worked really well. Great. Yeah, stability, stability or finding the areas of stability that we can find um, during this crisis period is, it's important for all of us, not just for kids. So, um, yeah. The other thing is that um, on one, one on one tutoring is, um, I had some parents worry that it kind of wasn't going to be that interactive because mm -hmm. you are looking at a screen. But it really can be just as interactive as a one-on-one -on -one session right. um, because I'm, you know, I'm having students write and they're mm -hmm. reading to me. They're, you know, making notes on things on the screen. Right. Right. Um, yeah, and I've seen some of, I've had some other of our staff members um, show me some examples of th some things and even have me interact with them. Um, mm -hmm. on some, and it is, it's fun and it's different and um you know, you can, yeah, it was, you know, you can click on things and circle things and write. Yeah, and there's, there's also online, you know, there's a lot of online games that I use so much. Right. They love using the tools mm -hmm. um, that they're actually more engaged. Now, I think there's also those kids who are on the opposite mm -hmm. side who need you to kind of be there. And right. it's hard for them to sit and, you know, do a session over the screen. Right. But um and I think that just that just goes to the whole idea that every student is different yeah, it's all true. the time. And and that's why one on one, at least um, initial conversation and assessment with that student is so important because even in a classroom, you know, 30 children do not all learn the same way. You know, these students now, you know, 100 percent of are at home doing their studies. That environment works for some. It does not work. For you. Right. Right. Um, kids that's really a big motivator that's something they didn't really get before mm -hmm. um i would we would play tabletop games and, right. dice and everything but now they get to play the computer games and right that's right so computer games thing. can be learning can't they <laughs> <laughs> okay well i uh, want to thank you so much joanna for um talking with me and sharing with parents and even other professionals out there who are kind of knee deep in all of this. So anything else you want to say or conclude with? I'm glad that, you know, we can still be offering kids these services. Yes, um, I am too. That they would too. really be in trouble without, without yes. these kind of, I mean, yeah, without this technology that we have, it's, it's kind right. of amazing that my, you know, the kids I'm working with, they're, they're learning. They're That's still great. learning. That's great. And that's what's important. So that's why we're here. That's why we're doing this. It's for the kids. So um, again, thanks so much. And um, we will talk soon. All right. Stay All well. Right. Bye.